Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that Jesus is on the throne? Even with all that's happening around the world at this time, God still rules. God still reigns. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's one thing you've got to settle. That's one thing you've got to remember. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever's going on in your, your world, whatever's happening in the family, in the job, in the economy, Jesus rules and Jesus reigns. Never forget that. It is so good to be here tonight with you. My wife sends her apologies. I was speaking to her earlier. She said, wow. She said, if there's one place, I, if I could go on this trip, it'd be right here in this church at this time. But unfortunately, we've had some kind of family challenges, but God is good. We've reminded ourselves that Jesus rules. <laughs> And Jesus reigns. Thank you so much for having me here and being here. It's such an honor. It's such a delight. So good as well to be with Pastor Kim and Connie. And uh, this is a connection in God, isn't it? That's, some, that's for something bigger than what we're even seeing at the moment. Because whether you realize it or not, the full Revival of God, the full awakening that God has planned for his church is about to break forth. I believe we're starting to see it. I believe there's a trickle happening right now. I'm kind of reminded of, of Ezekiel when he saw the temple, you know, and, and the water was rising and the river was coming into the temple, you know, and it filled him and he saw it at his angles and he saw it at his knees and then it was up to his neck and then it broke out of the temple and the water was the healing for the nations. And you know, it might not have broken out of the temple yet, but it might only be ankle deep, but it's ankle deep. <laughs> God's still moving, amen. And we've just got to believe that our best days are not behind us. They're here right now. The best is yet to come. Just to let you know, I've got some resources out there. One to just let you know about quickly. And I'm only going to talk about this and then we'll get into the word. I've done a number of USB sticks. Uh, one of them is called Revival Now. That's what I'm believing, Revival Now. You can go to, to Wales and they'll say revival yesterday. They'll always talk about what happened yesterday. Revival now. So I've got some of those out there if you're interested. I believe we've got some of the girls just taking care of the, the table. But hasn't God spoken already tonight? And uh, I'm just so excited to just be here with you. So if you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to... Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Mark 10, verse 46, a very familiar story. But you know, there's always new in the old. Do you know when you turn to the Word of God, it's not just, it's not a good book, it's God's book. That's why you can read any other book and get exactly the same out of it when you read it the first time. But when you come to the Word of God, there's always new revelation. And I'm seeking tonight to bring new revelation to you from a very familiar passage of Scripture, a very familiar story that's going to cause the miraculous to be released in this place tonight. If we believe the Word of the Lord, God wants to do something here. In fact, the Lord has said, take the limits off. Now you've got to put a demand on that word. Can't just be a word that you, that you take hold of and put on the shelf and say that's for the sweet by and by. No, be like the woman with the issue of blood. Take hold of that word. And say that word is for me tonight. I'm telling you, we are living in a time when signs, wonders and miracles are increasing. I've seen it in the last six months. There's something changing. There's something shifting. Not just for me, but for all of us. Mark chapter 10. Verse 46. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, 
blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warmed him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? I feel the Lord is asking that question to everybody in this room tonight. Sister Connie, there's no limitations on that. What do you want me to do? For you, throw those limits off. So the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are divinely appointed to be in your presence tonight. In fact, Lord, there's nowhere else that we could be this night because you have predestined this time together. We thank you, Lord, that every person in this room tonight was ordained before the foundations of the earth to be here tonight. We thank you, Lord, that, that because you are here, miracles are here. Because you are here, breakthroughs here. Because you are here, healings here. Because you are here, revivals here, awakenings here. When you are present, anything is possible. When you are present, more than we can ask, think, or imagine is present. And we thank you for the reading of your word tonight. And we believe, Lord, that through the preaching of the word, signs and wonders follow. So we ask you now, Holy Spirit, to move through every, every aisle. We ask you to, to move through every pew. We ask you to cause the, the hearing of the word to, to release faith in the hearts of your people. And we expect you to do what the word says you will do this night for the glorification of Jesus. Amen and amen. You know, this passage here tells us the story of Bartimaeus a man with an incredible need that had kept him bound until this moment in time. He had no hope. He had no fa uh, faith. He certainly had no sight. And all he knew was failure and hopelessness. And you know, the circumstances that he found himself in at this point in time had kind of written the final chapters concerning his future. Imagine it. He was kind of stuck in this rut. He was at the side of the road, he was unable to move because this sickness had kind of put the pause button on his destiny. It kind of paralyzed his purpose for being alive and the, and the precious moments of time were just passing him by. I'm sure he was just sat at that side of the road crying out maybe to a world that clearly wasn't listening to him. He was bound by a, a slavery called blindness. You know as well as I do that you can't fix blindness. We're not talking about a cough. We're not talking about the flu. We're not talking about a headache. This man was blind. All he saw was darkness. Listen, if, you, if you're born blind, you live blind. You try to gather food blind. You live your life. You live your day. You go to sleep blind. Sight for this man was impossible. But I want you to know that this day was different. Hallelujah. Just like this day is different. Because Jesus was passing by. Jesus was coming near this man for a moment. Jesus would be present. And when Jesus is present, everything potentially has to change when you put Jesus in the equation. Everything changes. And Jesus is always present amongst his people. For he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. 
You know, it doesn't matter what's impossible with man. It doesn't matter what's impossible in your circumstances. Tonight, God can take that impossibility and turn it around and make it possible through the power of His Spirit. Doesn't matter what your history is. Doesn't matter what your, your tragedy is. Doesn't matter what your trouble is. Doesn't matter what mountain might be standing in your way right now. Not only in your life, but also in the story of this man. Everything changes. Hear me now. Everything changes when Jesus is passing by. When Jesus is passing, when Jesus is present, breakthrough is present. When Jesus is present, healing is present. When Jesus is present, the bound have to be released. Demons cr cry out. Demons tremble when Jesus is present. And this Jesus is not just the same yesterday. He's not just the same tomorrow. He's the same today. <laughs> Problem is a lot of Christians talk more about a yesterday Jesus and a tomorrow Jesus than a today Jesus. Praise God for what he did yesterday. Praise God for the cross. Praise God for the resurrection. Praise God for what he'll do tomorrow. He's our soon coming king. But what about today? What about right now? What about right here? Today he can save you. Today he can heal you. Today he can move in a way in your life that's more than you could ask, think, or imagine. Everything changes. When Jesus is passing by when Jesus is in the house, when Jesus is present. What do you need to give him tonight? Let me tell you, you give him blindness and he'll give you sight. Ha! You bring him sickness and he'll bring you health. You bring him stinking dead Lazarus who's been dead for a number of days. You put him in the presence of, of a Jesus that has resurrection power and he'll raise him, hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the dead, you bring him a few loaves and a few fishes. He'll take hold of them and he'll multiply them and he'll feed a multitude. That's the kind of Jesus that's in this room. That's the kind of Jesus that's living within you right now. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you might ask, Think or imagine that's the God that we serve tonight. That's the God that has saved us tonight. That's the God who has transformed us tonight. And this story was not an ordinary day. It was marked, it was defined as an extraordinary day because Jesus was passing by. Everything changes when he is here. He makes the blind See, he makes the lame walk. He takes fear and he turns it into faith. He takes stress and he brings peace. He causes depression to turn into joy. When Jesus walks into your world, when you get that fresh encounter with God, everything changes. That's why we've got to stop talking about God, just talking about God and singing about God and reading about God and all those are vital, are vital but it means nothing unless you meet with God. You've got to know the author of the book. You've got to experience him. Not as a one-off experience. It's got to be a daily thing. And he's here tonight to change you. He's here. He was not short of miracles then and he's not short of miracles now. I sense the whole realm of the miraculous in this room right now. And he is more than able to meet every need, that was the prophecy. Every need that you have according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you that, 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 that there is an acceleration. There is an acceleration of the glory and the miracle working healing power of God on the rise in the church of Jesus Christ. It's not just an acceleration of darkness in the world. There's an acceleration of the glory of God filling the church of Jesus Christ like never before. It's not just in South America. It's not just in Africa. It's not just in Asia. It is in North America. There is going to be an explosion of the glory of God. Hallelujah. 
and we need to be like blind Bartimaeus and put a demand on God for it right now. I was in a church in Ireland after I came here last time. I got on, we got to Ireland. And I was preaching. And as I was preaching, this has never happened before. I, I was taken into an open vision, Pastor Kim. And in this open vision, I just saw body parts in the atmosphere. New body parts just in the atmosphere. And the Lord said to me, he said, anybody who he needs healing tonight, I'm here as the healer. I thought, my God, Lord, I've, we've arrived. <laughs> and I just saw all these parts above the people. And I said to them, I said, I'm not going to lay hands on you tonight. I said, you can come out in a prayer line. And I said, the Lord's here to heal. I said, whatever part you need in your body, pull it down. Pull it down. I don't often have open visions, but for a moment I saw a glimpse. I saw a glimpse of the eternal realm and people came out, they lined the altar and they started pulling down their healing and there were people just healed all around that building. There was a lady there that had diabetes. She pulled it down. She did a test there and then she got completely healed. There was another lady at the back that came in on a walker and I went up to her and I said, you can walk right now. Why don't you pull it down? She said, okay, I will. She pulled it down. She left the walker and she just started walking around that building completely healed by the power of God. Everybody got healed that night. Why? Because that is the will of God. And that's what we need to see in every local church in America and in Canada and in the UK and in Europe. And then the world will say, what the heck is going on in the church? People are getting healed. People are being raised from the dead. We need to get the press there. We need to find out what's happening. Jesus needs, is in the house. I want to encourage you tonight with some keys from this story that will help you believe. Help you believe that Jesus is greater. I know you know it in your head, but you need to know it in your spirit. Too many Christians live from head knowledge rather than heart knowledge. Too many Christians live from information rather than revelation. Information won't get you anywhere. We have to be a people of revelation. I want to give you some keys tonight that are going to help you understand that Jesus is greater than any trial, any hardship, any trouble you're going through right now, any problem. Not your problem. Don't own that problem. Don't own that sickness. Don't say it's my sickness. No, it was Jesus' sickness that he took upon himself 2,000 years ago. It ain't your sickness. Don't get familiar with that spirit of sickness. Say, I'm not receiving it in Jesus' name. Even if, even if the doctors have given you a diagnosis, even if there's pain in your body, believe, hallelujah, that you're receiving Jesus' name. Full health. Amen. Full health. You got to believe that that problem is temporal, but your God is eternal. There's a catch line for you there right now before you leave this place, wherever you're going this week. That problem is temporal. My God is eternal. I might be in the middle of that problem, but I'm passing through. I ain't, God ain't putting the pause button on me while I'm going through that problem or through that valley. David said this, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. He wasn't staying in that valley because he knew goodness and mercy would follow him all the days of the life and God might have brought him into that valley but God was going to bring him through and he's bringing you through. Hallelujah. Firstly, Jesus is greater than any Jericho that's affecting your life. When the power of Jesus Christ breaks into your world, every barrier, every wall has to fall. Everyone, not just 90%, every wall has to fall in Jesus' name. Verse 46, 
Now they came to Jericho. Some versions say this, as Jesus entered Jericho. Hallelujah. As Jesus entered Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. It's really interesting here that Jesus entered or Jesus went through Jericho. He didn't have to. He didn't have to go to Jericho, but he made a point to pass through Jericho. It's like he's prophetically saying that he was greater than anything Jericho represented because Jericho is temporal. But our God, hallelujah, is eternal. You bring God on the scene and every Jericho wall has to fall. Listen, this was the same Jericho and the first city that Joshua and the children of Israel faced when they crossed the Jordan and entered the promised land. I don't know if you know this, but Joshua cursed Jericho. He said, anybody who builds up that city will be cursed. That place was a cursed place. But let me tell you, Jesus Christ, the blessing, goes into the place of cursing. He goes into a cursed city and he says, I am the blessing of God and I am greater than any Jericho wall that faces people in this city. I will bring my blessing. I will bring my life. I will bring my goodness. I will bring my mercy and hallelujah, I will bring my power. You know, when Joshua faced Jericho, God promised him that he could conquer and possess that city. And they took hold of the word of the Lord, as you know, and they walked around that city seven times. And on the seventh time, the trumpeters played the trumpet and the, and the people of God shouted, it says, with a loud shout. Something happens when you release a shout of praise, when you release a shout of faith. There was a loud shout. And the walls came tumbling down. And you know, just like Joshua conquered natural Jericho, we can, through Christ, conquer any spiritual Jericho that we are facing tonight. The higher the wall is, the harder it's going to fall in Jesus' name. Be like David. Don't look at the size of your giant. Look at the size of your God. Stop looking at the giant. Stop looking how big the mountain is. Stop looking how big the problem is. Look at the size of your God. If God is for you, who can be against you? When you think of Jericho, you think of something that's closed up, locked up, blocked up. A promise that's got a, a, a wall in front of it. A barrier that stops you receiving your inheritance. This is what Bartimaeus faced. His, his Jericho was his blindness. He was bound by this wall. But I declare for you right now, just like God broke through for Joshua, just like God broke through for Bartimaeus, God has the power tonight to break through for you and cause those Jericho walls to come tumbling down. In the mighty name of the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords, God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. I pray right now that there will be a full manifestation of the healing power of Jesus Christ in this room tonight. Hallelujah. We don't want to go and leave this place without, without everybody receiving a full manifestation of the healing miraculous power of God in their bodies tonight. Something's changed in the last time I was in Ireland in, 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 I think it was April, we went to one church, the power of God hit that place. While we were speaking, while we were ministering, the pastor got healed, his wife got healed, 26 people in that building got healed and nobody laid their hands on them. Why? Because Jesus is moving amongst his people. You can get healed right now. He sent his word and healed them. Receive it by faith. Right now. In the name of Jesus, 
I really do want you to believe with me tonight that the Spirit of God is saying to you that those walls are coming down. It might be emotional problems. It might be physical problems. It might be financial problems. It might be family problems. Declare and decree in the name of Jesus that those walls are coming down because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. What we bind on earth tonight is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth tonight is loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. We resist the devil. We'll fight him with the word of God and the power of the spirit. And as we resist him and deal with him with the sword of the spirit, he has to fly. Secondly, hearing the word and speaking the word releases the power and the provision of God. There's always fruit when you believe the word and confess the word. That's why you've got to keep a good confession. Why do I need to keep a good confession, John? Because there's many voices trying to, to throw seeds into your heart. There are many voices in this world. The first thing that you find about this story is this, that Bartimaeus heard about Jesus. It's really important at this time what you hear and what you give your hearing to. There's the voice of the media. There's the, there's the voice of life. There's the voice of the spirit of this age. There's the voice of the workplace. There's the voice of the family. But there's one voice that you need to hear clearer than any other voice, and that's the voice of God. How can we get direction without the voice of God? Jesus said in John chapter 10, he said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You can't follow him unless you're hearing his voice. And if you're a child of God, if you're a believer, your spirit is open and your spirit is activated to hear the still small voice of heaven to lead you through the chaos that's happening in this world at this time. Hearing the word, speaking the word changes things. Grumbling doesn't change things. Talking negatively doesn't change things. Worrying doesn't change things. Speaking fear, please don't speak fear. There's too much fear in the world right now. You're in a different kingdom and God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. But power, love and a sound mind. The key for you and the key for me is, is having the word in our heart and the word in our mouth. As we have the word in our heart and the word in our mouth, there is a release of creative miracles. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. That's not just for salvation, that's for life. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. Doesn't matter what's going on around you. You might have lost your job. You might have nothing in the bank. You believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I've given to God's house. Hallelujah. God's going to rebuke that devourer. He's going to pour out a blessing until there's no more need. I'm not going to be in recession because there's no recession in heaven. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth because Jehovah Jireh is my provider. Hallelujah. God responds to that. God likes that kind of faith. That's not arrogance, that's boldness. You can boldly come before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in your time of need. You see, the word in our heart, the spirit in our heart are the weapons of our warfare. We have many weapons. But Paul said very clearly that the weapons of our warfare are spiritual, not carnal, for the pulling down of strongholds. Maybe there's some strongholds. Maybe there's some castles in your mind. Maybe there's some barriers. Maybe there's some Jericho walls. Well, let's release the word tonight. And let's believe that something will happen because God's promises are voice activated. You release your voice and something is activated in the spirit realm. Look at Genesis chapter 1. Everything in existence was created by the spoken word of God. Time and time again it says, then God said, then God said, then God said. And you and I have the same ability. For there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Faith brings the atmosphere up. Unbelief brings the atmosphere down. Don't tell me what God can't do. Tell me what God can do. 
God can do anything he wants to do. God can do everything according to his word, which is will. Don't bring any negativity. Don't bring anything into my presence that's opposite to the word of God. I want to hear faith. I want to hear what God's going to do in your life. I want to agree with you in faith in the name of Jesus and believe. Something's going to change. Something's going to shift. Mark 10, 47, when they heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. One version says this, and the crowd tried to quiet him, yet he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, there will always be a crowd. There will always be something, particularly in the time that we're at, there will always be something trying to crowd out the voice of God and cry it out and put a dampener on your faith. But you've got to be like Bartimaeus. You've got to cry out all the more and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Nothing couldn't. Nothing could silence Bartimaeus. And let me say this, let nothing silence you. This isn't a time for the church of Jesus Christ to retreat. This is a time to advance. I know many Christians say this and I understand it. You know, we're waiting for the Lord to come and they will say, occupy till I come. Well, I believe the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of God is saying, take over till I come. We want to go into the highways and byways and take ground for the kingdom of God. Till Jesus returns. This is the time for us to use our voice. Because as we say it, as we proclaim it, as we decree it, I really do believe that the Spirit of God is going to manifest it. Don't speak words of doubt. Don't speak words of failure. Don't question what God has promised you. Hold on to the word of God. Keep a good confession. Believe what God has spoken to you because there's an acceleration going on. There's an acceleration going on in the world. The world has changed. I felt the Lord say to me that in the world, you know, in terms of darkness and intensity of evil, what has taken 10 years is going to take five. What has taken five is going to take three. Some things are just going to happen in a day. But the Lord said this to me, what is happening in the world is going to be exactly the same in the kingdom. There's going to be an acceleration of my goodness. There's going to be an acceleration of my grace. There's going to be an acceleration of my power and my glory. And what's taken 10 years is going to take five. And what's taken five is going to take three. And something says the Lord are going to happen in a day why because Jesus is coming soon keep a good confession hold on to the word if you've got nothing good to say as we say in the UK zip it your words have a creative force I remember coming back from the US I think I was here in March and I got home And we have a motorhome and we drive that motorhome around the UK. And we go from church to church to church. We go to Northern Ireland where Pastor Kim and Connie have been and ministered in a number of churches. And I was putting gas in the tank. And we're over $8 a gallon. If you ever, ever want to complain about gas prices again, think about that little old evangelist that goes around the UK and fills up his motorhome, amen? And I filled it up and it was like nearly $180 to fill up the tank. And I got in the motorhome and we started driving to one of the churches that we go to and I started moaning and complaining and I said, Lord, Anna, look at the price of gas. How are we going to get round here? Have you seen how much it is? I can't believe what we're paying for gas. And immediately the Holy Spirit said to me, Connie, he said this, who's your source? He said, who's your source? 
He said, if you want to pay for it on your own and, 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 and pay your own bills, that's okay. You go on, son. I'll take my hand off. He said, there's no recession in heaven. He said, it doesn't matter what price the gas is going to be. I am going to pay all your bills because we don't live by this world system. Can you hear me now? We're citizens of the kingdom of God. God will always provide for his people. He will always provide for you. So synchronize your confession with the word of God and believe what God has promised you. Finally, let go tonight, please. Make that decision. Let go tonight of anything that holds you back. Throw it off. Step into the new. Step into what God has got for you from this moment on tonight. We're in a new season. We're in September. We're in fall. Summer's gone. It's a new season. It's a new time. It's a new day. Let me say this to you. I wrote this down. The, the Spirit of God said this to me, and I want to speak this into your heart. Old ways won't open new doors. Old ways won't open new doors. God is not a God of the old. He's a God of the new. He's a God of history. He's a God of heritage. But old things have passed away. God is constantly trying to do and wanting to do through our lives a new thing. He says, forget the former things. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says that you new creations in Christ Jesus, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let's look one final time at the story. Mark 10 verse 49. Then they called the blind man, verse 50, and throwing aside his garment. There's a key there for you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? There's no limits on that. Hasn't that been prophesied tonight? There's no limits on that. That's like somebody walking into this room right now, putting your name on the top of a check, putting their signature on the bottom and saying, fill it in. I've got good news for you. You've got more than a natural check in this room. You've got more than millions or billions. You've got all the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And those promises have got your name on them. Those promises have been written through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And whatever you need tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, fill it in. If it's healing, fill it in. If it's breakthrough, fill it in. If it's change, fill it in. If it's direction, fill it in. The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And in 10 years time, he received his sight. No. And immediately... I know we're not settling for anything else. We are pressing in and pressing in and this church is pressing in for the immediate release of sudden healings like we've never seen before. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. It's interesting here that as Jesus spoke and called Bartimaeus, he threw off his garment and came to Jesus. Many writers, many commentators believe that this was a beggar's garment. That this garment associated and identified him as a beggar. But you see, this, this garment now had no place in his present. This garment had no place in his future. It was his painful past. It was baggage from a life that was gone now. And for him to move forward in his destiny, for him to move into his new day, for him to move into a new season in God, he had to throw off that garment and believe that Jesus was going to do what he said he was going to do. And you know, just like Bartimaeus had to leave the past and the baggage behind, 
I believe the Lord is saying to every one of us to examine our hearts because for us to move forward, you've got to close the door to the past because as you close the door to the past, the Lord opens the door to the future. It's really interesting here because it was only when he threw off his garment that the Lord spoke. It says the Bartimaeus threw off his garment and Jesus said, You know, as long as we are carrying garments, as long as we are carrying things from the past, as long as we are not dealing with the things that God is telling us to deal with, the voice of God will not come clear. The voice of God will not open the door to the next season. The voice of God comes clearly when we obey Him. Because as long as you're carrying that baggage, as long as you're wearing that garment, it's like you're going round in circles because you're not doing what God has told you to do. Throw it off tonight. Throw it off. Because as you throw off the old, the Lord will speak. Crystal clear. He will say, what do you want me to do for you? Let me tell you, what we do today, what you do right now changes you tomorrow. I remembered a quote from the business world and I'd like to Just give you it that I heard many years ago, and it was this. If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. Make today different. Nothing changes until we recognize that. And the solution for breakthrough for me, and the solution for breakthrough for you, and the solution to moving on with God is letting go of stuff. He let go of his garment. He threw it off. And it's interesting that he threw it behind him because he let that go and he went towards Jesus and his eyes were open and the first person that he saw was Jesus. Amazing. So much in this story. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Well, John, you don't know how much that person has hurt me. You don't know how much that person has affected my life. Listen, it's stopping you moving forward. Let it go. You know how long we as a family have just been waiting for breakthrough, John? Do you know what we've gone through? I believe God and nothing's happened. Let it go. Well, I've got this weakness. I've got this addiction. I've got this sin. But you know, God loves me anyway. Listen, you'll never move forward until you let it go. Well, I've struggled with anger or I've struggled with hurt or I've got this self-rejection or I've got a bad self-image. Let it go. You know, so many Christians can be so kind and loving and gracious to others, but they beat themselves up. Let it go. Stop beating yourself up. Stop acting like a victim when you're a victor. You are not a victim. You're a victor. You're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And I know for the pastors in this house that their will and their desire and their prayers is that you come into the fullness of Christ Jesus in your life, that you come into the fullness of maturity that God has got for your life. And it's time for us as the people of God to grow up and be all that God has called us to live and be. Let it go. Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you maybe he's asking you that tonight what do you want me to do for you Bartimaeus said that I may receive my sight he asked he responded maybe you haven't received tonight because you haven't asked Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. The book of James says you have not because you ask not this is the time to ask and it's time to ask big I'm asking big of the Lord in these last days. I'm asking the Lord not just to fill churches. I'm asking the Lord to fill stadiums. I'm believing the day is coming where we're going to see stadium evangelism, where stadiums are going to be filled with people seeking Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Stadiums, nations, towns. For Jesus Christ. Ask Biff. Release your faith. 
Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Pull the promises of God from the unseen realm into the seen realm tonight. Release your trust in the word of the Lord. You've heard the prophecy. You've heard my word. What will change things? What will be the currency of the kingdom that will release the miraculous tonight? Your faith. All things are possible to him who believes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, John, I need to let go of something that represents that garment. I know there's some things in my life, there's some baggage that I'm carrying that needs to go. You know, that garment might be lukewarmness. That garment might be questioning God. That garment might be unforgiveness. It could be a thousand different things, but it's your past. It has no place in your present. It has no place in your future. And I believe the Spirit of God is saying maybe to some individuals tonight, let it go. Throw it behind you. Move on. Move on. Move on tonight with God. This is a new day. God wants to do something new in your life. But you've got to let go of the baggage. You've got to throw it off. Because as you throw it off, the voice of God, I can tell you, testimony after testimony after testimony, when you throw off that stuff, when you walk away from that, which you know God wants you to deal with, and you turn around, in one sense it's called repentance, you turn away from that stuff, you walk towards God, the voice of God comes clearly. Every time. Saying, John, that's me. I want to respond right now. Well, I want to pray for you right where you are. If you're saying, John, pray for me right now, just raise your hand where you are in this room. That's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands up all over this room. Thank you. Thank you. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Just raise your hand so I can see them where you are right now. I'm letting it go. Don't be sentimental and saying, yeah, that's, that's right for me. Take hold of it and say, God, I'm making that decision right now. I'm walking away from it and I'm moving on with God. Hands over here, hands over. Just wave them, keep them up, please. I know God's working on hearts here right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you for every man and woman of God right now. That are saying, Lord, I'm not going to live in the past. I'm not going to live in the old. I'm not going to go around this, this mountain of tragedy, this mountain of regret. Maybe some of you are negative. So, somebody here tonight, you've just got a negative attitude. Let it go. Walk away from it. No more. No, no more. This is a new day for you tonight. Let it go. Throw it off. Some of you just need to throw it behind you right now. You just need to throw that thing off. In the name of Jesus, old things have passed away. Old things, they're gone. No longer am I going to be haunted by that thing. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I ain't a slave to sin. I'm not a slave to that son. I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm a child of the king. And it's got no hold over me in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for every man, every woman, every child that's just raised their hands in this room right now. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the power of God would come upon every life from the youngest to the oldest right now in Jesus' name. I break that power of the past. It has no power because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I come against that lie. I come against that deception. I come up against everything that represents that worn out garment of a beggar. They are not beggars. They are children of the king. They are royalty. We throw off the beggar's garment and we command it to fall off right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, John, I want to pray for this group of people. You might be saying, well, John, I've got a Jericho. There, there seems like a, a Jericho wall in my life. It might be a wall of sickness. It might be a wall of suffering. It might be a, a wall of fear, whatever it is. I declare according to the word of God that those walls are coming down tonight in Jesus' name. 
Just like Jesus entered natural Jericho, Jesus is coming to that Jericho tonight and he's smashing those walls down in Jesus' name. He took the Jericho out of Bartimaeus' life and he can take the Jericho out of your life. He's no respecter of per per persons. He can do what he did then. He doesn't change. He's exactly the same. Tonight. That's you. I want you to stand to your feet right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer. Sister at the back there. I just see the Spirit of God all over you. Right there at the back. Right there at the back. Yeah, you're looking around right now. You're right by the door. Can I pray for you? You need prayer. You need prayer. You need God to break into your life. Hallelujah. Would you, like, would you like to be prayed for right now? Because I really believe I saw the spotlight of God just upon you. Come forward right now. Hallelujah. Just, just reach out your hands towards our dear sister here. Hallelujah. Just come forward, yeah? Come forward. Let's just pray for you right now. Hallelujah. Just reach out your hands towards her right now in the name. Sister Connie, if you could just come as well. My wife isn't here, so I think this is important. God's going to break those chains off your emotions. God's going to break those chains off, off your mind. God's going to deal with those spirits that have just been harassing you and attacking you right now in the name of Jesus. And the Lord says, this is your night for peace. This is your night for wholeness. The Lord says, if you will receive internal wholeness, if you will ex receive a, 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 the power of God and the Holy Spirit into your heart and into your mind, it will transform you on the inside and change the outside, says God. Father, we just pray right now for our, our dear sister, whatever she's going through right now, we break those chains off her right now in Jesus' name. And we ask you, Lord, for a release of the power of God from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We command every chain, every shackle to be broke right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I command every devil, every devil, every devil, every devil to stop attacking her in her mind and in her soul right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord's been really using me to, to, to break fear and break anxiety and break internal conflict off people. And I've seen so many people completely healed instantly. I'm telling you, there's anointing right now. If you're struggling with fear, if you're struggling with stress, if you're struggling with issues in your mind, it's stopping tonight. It's stopping tonight. Right now in the name of Jesus, don't wait. I'm just giving you this opportunity now. Come forward. Come forward quickly, 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 quickly. It's going to stop. It's going to stop. It's going to stop. It's going to stop tonight 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 in the name of Jesus it's stopping tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus power of God's just working here church will you just pray in the Holy Spirit just for each one of these people right now in the name of Jesus we're breaking it off you we're breaking all depression off you the devil's a liar the devil's a liar the devil's a liar there's the healing balm there's the healing balm of Gilead hallelujah coming into your soul there's the healing balm the healing anointing of the Lord coming into your soul right now he restores your soul he restores your mind no more from tonight no more in the name of Jesus we're breaking it we're breaking it. Let me just say to each one who's standing right now, if, if there's anything that the Holy Spirit is showing you where you need to forgive or you need to ask for repentance, do it now quickly before hands are laid on you. Don't give the enemy any room or opportunity to work. Just deal with that stuff right now quickly, quickly. If he's bringing something to mind, just deal with it. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for each man and woman of God that are standing here right now. We command those attacks to stop. We declare that fear has no authority. Stress has no authority. Mental attack has no authority. Depression has no authority. Mourning has no authority. Grieving has no authority. If you've grieved and you're still grieving, the Lord says it's time to move on. Grieving has no authority. You move on. You move on. You move on. He'll turn your mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We know that there's a season where that has to happen. But if you're continually experiencing that, there's a time for that to break in Jesus' name. Tonight. 
Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to just touch your people from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I command those chains to fall off you right now in the name of Jesus. I command that heaviness to lift right now in the name of Jesus. I command that emotional, I just see like an emotional roller coaster. It just kind of comes on you at times and you can be really high and then you get really low. And the Lord says right now in Jesus' name, we just command that healing and that wholeness right now in your mind and in your, in your soul and in your spirit, that your spirit will just fill your heart and your mind. I speak to every voice and every lie. There's time where there's whispers, there's voices that come into your mind. I say enough, no more. I, I break every assignment of hell off you right now in the name of Jesus. No no more, no more, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more worry. In Jesus' name, we break it. We break it right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, right now. Jesus' name, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just pray for our dear sister right now. We just command a release of that anointing, a release of that anointing from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We command no more fear, no more anxiety, no more stress. No more worry. We break it off you right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Just receive that anointing right now. The anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing breaks the yoke. That peace comes right now in Jesus' name. That peace comes right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break the power of any attack that the enemy's brought against your mind and your soul right now. It ends now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Jesus' name. Jesus' name, break it, break it off you, we break it off you in the name of Jesus. We break it off you in the name of Jesus. We break it off you in the name of Jesus. We break it off you in the name of Jesus. We break it off you in the name of Jesus. We break it off you in the name of Jesus. We command healing, we command hopeless, we command a sound mind. A sound mind, a sound mind right now in Jesus' name. 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 Father, we just pray for our dear sister right now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just said the power of God. I just said the power of God. I just said the power of God right now. In Jesus' name. I just release that power. The top of your head to the soles of your feet. That's it. That's it. That's it. Power of God. 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 Top of your head, soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. No more fear, no more fear, no more fear, no more fear, no more fear. Break it off. No more worry, no anxiety, no burdens, no more. No more. In the name of Jesus. Let's find your sin, be burdened, coming off you right now. It's been a heavy weight. We're going to break it off you right now in the name of Jesus. We're going to command that release. We're going to turn it into the soul of your feet. We call the power of God. The power of God, the anointing of God, the strength of God. Fill it right now. It's flooding like you've never known before. Hallelujah. You're forgiven, brother. You've heard the Lord say that you're forgiven. You're forgiven. It's under the blood. Hallelujah. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. And we rebuke that guilt, right? That guilt, that heaviness, that attack from your mind, your heart, your emotions, right? Now we take it off. It's a lie. It's a lie. You pull it out and you take it off. No more. No more. No more. No more. We close the door to the enemy's attack on you right now, Jesus. Just release that just for this time, right now, the top of this head, that's it, that's it, we're getting that breakthrough. Okay. Oh, right now, the power of God go from the top of the head to the soles of the feet right now. In Jesus' name, now take it off you, take that weight off you, take that heaviness off you. Of God, fill you, fill you, fill you, fill you. Let all that worry and anxiety leave, and let the power of peace fill you. quickly if you hear you saying yes I've got a there's a Jericho wall it needs to fall it's going to fall right now if there's a Jericho wall you're saying yeah Jesus is, is greater than my than that Jericho I'm believing right now that that wall's going to fall it might be financial it might be healing 
It might be kids. I don't know what it is. If you're saying you need prayer in that area, come forward right now quickly. I'll just lay hands on you. You'll agree with me and we'll believe right now that those walls are coming down. If that's you, come quickly. Come, come, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I I need to pray for this lady here. My Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Sabahata karabahata karasambrahanda manaka. I really want to pray. In fact, I saw you in a vision in the middle of the night. I was interceding intensely for this church, praying for all that God has for you, Pastor Dave. I was just in the spirit praying in tongues. It's like God has got so much in store for you that's good. Hallelujah. We know that, don't we? But I I was doing some battle against some spirits because they're not going to stop what God has got in fullness for this church. Amen. Praise God. But I saw this lady in a vision and I'd like us just to pray for her right now. Right now, in her body, in in, in, in her health, in her health, in in all areas in her life. I want to believe. The Lord said, pray for breakthrough. I kept on praying for you in the night. I kept on praying for you. And I want to pray right now that there will be a fullness of the power of God to bring restoration. Restoration to body. Restoration to soul. Restoration to health. 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 It's time. It's like it's overdue. It's overdue. Lord, we're asking right now for our dear sister. Lord, you showed me her. You showed me her. And I'm praying right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for a full healing, a full release of the power of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to do what I saw in the vision. It might seem a little bit strange, but I'm going to grab one of your hands. Pastor Kim's going to grab the other hand. I just want to do what I've seen, okay? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Pastor Kim, let's just believe right now that the power of God's going to go. Amen. Through this body, in the name of Jesus, we curse all sickness, we curse all disease, we command healing for our dear sister right now. For the power of God, to go through her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. I rebuke all sickness. I rebuke all disease. I command every devil and every attack of sickness to come out of her body, to come out of her bones. It can't touch her spirit or anything that's attacking her body. Loose her and let it go in the name of Jesus. And let this be the start of a full recovery, a full recovery of health in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But I want you to know, says the Lord, that sickness is not in charge of your body. I want you to know, says the Lord, that I am in charge of your body. I want you to know, says the Lord, that as your days will be, so will your your strength will be. I want you to know, says the Lord, that the final one who decides when you come to be with me is me, says the Lord. It's not the enemy. It's not the evil one. It's not even sickness. I have authority. So this is a day to rejoice, says the Lord. This is a day to be glad, says the Lord. For I brought you out of the crowd. I've shown you that I still know you. I've shown that I still hear your prayers, says the Lord. I've shown you that I've heard you cry. And I'm answering your cry, says the Lord. For I'm with you. And even this day, says the Lord, my angels surround you. And even from this day, says the Lord, there's going to be a greater sense of my presence, a greater sense of my power, a greater sense of my glory says the Lord even some of those desires that you brought in the secret place some of those requests that you that you haven't told many about I'm answering the desires of your heart says the Lord I'm releasing those desires and I'm going to bring them fulfilled promises for you've waited many years for some of those promises but you watch and see says God for this is your time this is your turn this is your moment to see the glory of God in the land of heaven thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Jericho walls coming down. Let's just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Right now we command those Jerichos to come down in the name of Jesus. We command those Jerichos to come down in the name of Jesus. Every wall fall. Every wall fall right now in Jesus' name. Health, healing, blessing. We command it right now in Jesus' name. We curse all sickness. We curse all disease. We command those walls to come down. We command those walls to come down. We command those walls to come down. We command those walls to come down in Jesus' name. Just pull down your miracle. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. The Lord is in the house. Pull it down. Pull down. We command those walls to fall in the name of Jesus. We command those walls to fall in the name of Jesus. We command those walls to fall in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. I command every chain to come off your soul right now. I command every chain to come off your spirit right now. You've suffered in your soul. You've suffered in your mind. You've suffered in your emotions. It's been so hard at times. It's like you've gone through dark seasons and dark days of the soul. But the Lord says right now I'm releasing your soul. I'm taking off that heaviness. I'm taking off those yokes. I'm taking off those chains. I'm releasing you right now. For even through your tears, says the Lord, there's going to be a flood burst and a healing and a release, says God. But this is your season of jubilee. This is your season to know peace and wholeness on the inside so that you can thrive and prosper on the outside. Be released right now. Be released right now in Jesus' name. Be released right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, may I please keep these in my name and be very seen. Father, we just pray for our brother right now in the name of Jesus. We command healing. We command wholeness right now. For his eyes, we command a full recovery of sight right now in Jesus' name. Can we agree on that for our brother right now? Can we agree and say we're not going to settle for this man to lose his sight? We're going to believe right now for a full healing for this brother right now. Hallelujah. If he could do it for Bartimaeus, he can do it for our brother right now. We command that healing. We command that wholeness right now and a full restoration of sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Is that everybody prayed for? Everybody prayed for? Bless you, sister. We command those walls to fall right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, can you walk? You can watch that for me. Right. Well, let's just pray for that need right now. Lord, we pray for that need. Lord, we pray for a healing in that need. We pray for restoration of full health for our sister. We pray even this night, Lord. <laughs> Lord, let there be a full healing on our sister right now. We know you can do it. We know you want to do it, Lord. So we pray, God, right now for a full healing in our sister. A full release for that wall to fall and a full miracle in her body. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, was there anybody else? Right now, let those walls fall in Jesus' name. Let those walls fall in Jesus' name. Let those walls fall in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, right now. Chain, release. Release in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hey, thanks for watching that. It's our prayer that that ministered to you, that the Lord spoke to you through that message. Uh, don't forget, hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more videos from us. Uh, we're live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Hey, keep living the abundant life that Jesus called you to live.